Um, my name is uh, Senator Victor Ome, OFR. I'm the senator representing Anambra Central Senatorial District in the Senate. Fifth Iguera TV Leadership Excellence Awards, the Congress Hall, Transcop Hilton, Abuja, Saturday, November 11, 2023, 5 p.m. Red Carpet, 6 p.m. Main Event, Chairman of Ceremonies, Professor Owunari George Will, Vice Chancellor, University of Port Harcourt, Keynote Speaker, Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu, Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Special Guests of Honor, His Excellencies, Senator George Akume, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator Oji Uzokalu, former Senate Chief Whip, Dr. Alex Oti, Abia State Governor, Dr. Beta Edu, Humanitarian Affairs Minister. Through a seven-day nationwide online poll monitored by the News Agency of Nigeria and endorsed by African Union, African Film Institute, the following emerged 2023 winners. Bala Mohamed, Kawu Samail, Unajio for Ebiam, Abdul Rabiu, Unden Nauti, Chibu Zochinyere, Udiagwe Brown, Adams Oshomole, Ifanyi Uba, Adeze Kalu, Victor Osime, Rufai Oseni, Baba Wale Oloba, Aloy Ikikwanu, Yusuf Dahiru, Monde Okwebolo, Victor Briggs, Emeka Nwala, Gine Kato, Ogunari Georgewell, Victor Ume, Benjamin Kalu, Muhammad Sheikh, Gentle Jack, Mohammed Isa, Mebaka Nabiebo, Michelle Aluzie, Yul Edoche, Hadiza Kango, Nikki Jonas, Felix Ogbaudu, Patricia Obonaya, Chidi Amechi, Zainab Ibrahim, David Anyele, Ali Ibrahim, Abubakar Sadiq, Valentine Ezu Chegu, Sulaiman Dabo, Uche Okoko, David Obona, OTE, United Nigeria Air. Twenty twenty three civil rights advocate of the year. How do you feel? Well, I feel excited. Um, all my life, I've always uh, thought about um, the rights of citizens, how to protect the rights of the ordinary people in Nigeria, particularly the oppressed and the marginalized. So in all my engagements, uh, both public engagements and uh, uh, in the legislature here in the National Assembly, my contributions have always been on how to strengthen protection of human rights, you know, promotion of equality of rights of citizens, um, equal opportunity for all, uh, practicing inclusiveness in governance so that um, in Nigeria uh, that we have, we should be able to protect the rights of all the federating units, all the component parts of Nigeria should be carried along in all the activities of government. So I've always uh, had eagle eyes on everything that happens. And um, when matters come before us in the Senate, I will always look at how the law has been applied to promote um, to promote um, equality of rights of the citizens. So that what is a, whatever that is available should be available to all. You know, it doesn't matter how small it is. Nobody should be discriminated against. Nobody should be excluded in the affairs of the state. So that's what I've been doing over the years. And um, when I was here in the Eighth Senate, I was christened uh, Mr. Equity and Fairness. So <laughs> my contributions have always been on how to guarantee equality of rights and recognition to all people of Nigeria. You know, because that's, I believe that's the only way the country can uh, truly live um, up to its motto, you know, um, unity, faith, and progress. If you don't have um, uh, equity in the way you do things, you will never have unity. So um, I've taken it as a passion to ensure that um, government should be even-handed in dealing with its, its uh, citizens. Very good. Yeah, our constitution uh, uh, envisages that um, sometimes some people may not do things the way they ought, they ought to do them. 
But um, in order to ensure that balance, we, we have a provision in the Constitution um, which we refer to as the Federal Character Principle, Section 14. C of the Constitution, which says that no part of Nigeria shall dominate others, whether in areas of appointments, um, in employment, distribution of uh, amenities, infrastructural development. In fact, all activities of government shall be carried out in such a manner that all parts of Nigeria will be accommodated in it. And no part of Nigeria will dominate in such um, situations. So the Section 14 of the Constitution guarantees um, equal opportunity to all. All, everything. But unfortunately, we, we practice that in breach. We pretend as if that such a provision is not in our Constitution. And um, people, some people have tended to carry on in a manner that will suggest that the weak among us shall be trampled upon, you know. So my advocacy in that regard is that in all my public um, discussions, engagements, and activities, I've continued to serve as a gadfly uh, to prick on the conscience of the state to know that um, the government should be there for everybody. And that is the only way we can make meaningful progress as a nation. Civil rights advocacy appears to be the minority voice. People expect, or sometimes, or most times, people in leadership appear to be more interested in their self-interest. What is the inspiration behind your continuous advocacy for the people? Well, uh, it gives me joy to stand for justice. And if you want to do such a thing, um, you will not uh, be uh, thinking about yourself or con counting the costs of speaking the truth. Uh, my background is such that uh, I've been um, uh, emboldened to speak the truth at all times by my training and upbringing. And um, I uh, have made it part of my life to speak the truth. And the truth hurts, you know. For example, um, I'm, I'm a Roman Catholic by faith, and um, I'm a Knight of St. John International. I joined the Order of Knights of St. John International out of my free choice because of what um, the patron saint of that order did, St. John the Baptist, what he did was that he spoke the truth at the risk of his own life. He told the king that what he was doing was not good. He should not take his brother's wife. He was thrown into jail. And uh, when the opportunity came for him to be coerced to recant uh, on what he had stood for, he refused. He said they will never withdraw that statement. It is still wrong for you to take your brother's wife. Have you seen it? So when um, uh, it dawned on him that he would be killed unless he withdrew his uh, position, he said he was ready to go. How many people would do that? And the woman who was involved in that dastardly act had her daughter celebrating her birthday. And the daughter went to the king and said, today is my birthday. And uh, the king asked the daughter, um, what will I do for you? A young girl ran to the mother and said, what will I ask for? The woman asked her to ask for the head of John the Baptist, who was in prison. And she ran back to the king and said, I want the head of John the Baptist. He was brought out from prison and asked to recant. I had a chance to be set free. He withdraws his um, 
um, denunciation of uh, no. If if uh, he says I would draw what I have said, it's no longer wrong. He said he will never do that. So he was led away and put on the slaughter. His head was cut off. Well, that was what the girl requested on the, on the uh, request of the mother. The head of John the Baptist was put on the platter and given to the girl to go and give to the mother. How many people would do that for the sake of the truth to elect to die? So that's it. So since I joined that order in 2001, that's 22 years ago, I've always put defense of the truth in front of me. So I can tell you anything at any time. And that's what probably uh, what I've been known for in Nigeria. That I speak the truth always. I speak the truth to power. And you cannot um, bend me to see what is black and I say it is white. What is the purpose? I will not do that. So because we are challenged as a people in this country, so many things are going wrong. And many people cannot speak for the fear of losing their personal interest, for the fear of uh, being um, maybe arrested for one thing or the other. So you keep quiet. Because anybody who maintains seed lips will never be harassed. But when you speak and the people know your opinion and what, what you stand for, you know, most times you will speak to hurt those who are in authorities because so many things are going wrong. So that is it. I've taken it as a way of life. It's been very um, costly doing that, but it is better to say the truth. I remember when we were in the Eighth Senate, my friend uh, Dino Milaya, when he stands up to speak, when he stood up to speak, or when he stands up to speak anytime, he will say, I'll say the truth. It's better for me to say the truth and die. Because if you don't say the, the truth, you will still die. So let me <laughs> speak the truth and die. So it, it became a slogan then, because people were afraid to speak the truth. But only the truth will set you free. That's what is in the Bible. If you speak the truth, the truth will set you free. Today, in the eyes of the world, or in the eyes of the people, um, you may be going through a lot of denials, you know, for the kind of uh, principles you exhibit. You will not be involved in where deals are made, where money will be shared. Because they know that if you are there, most likely you will speak against it. So they share the booty. But uh, I know that there are so many people who are ready, particularly in the Senate of today, who are ready to think about the ordinary people. Because that's what we are here for. We are representatives of people who are in the streets, people who are going through all kinds of tribulations, all kinds of hardships and so on and so forth. So if you are here, you should be able to speak for them. That's what the essence of electing you. Stand up and speak for them. Stand up and uh, make uh, contributions that will lead to reforms that will make this country uh, function better. You know. So that's it. Fifth Iguera TV Leadership Excellence Awards, the Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton, Abuja, Saturday, November 11, 2023, 5 p.m. Red Carpet, 6 p.m. Main Event, Chairman of Ceremonies, Professor Owunari George Will, Vice Chancellor, University of Port Harcourt, Keynote Speaker, Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu, Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Special Guests of Honor, His Excellencies, Senator George Akume, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, Former Senate Chief Whip, Dr. Alex Oti, Abia State Governor, Dr. Beta Edu, Humanitarian Affairs Minister. Through a seven-day nationwide online poll monitored by the News Agency of Nigeria and endorsed by the African Union African Film Institute, the following emerged 2023 winners. Bala Mohammed. 
Kawu Samail, Unajio for Abiam, Abdul Rabio, Unen Naote, Chibos Ochenere, Udiagwe Brown, Adams Oshomale, Ifanyi Uba, Adeze Kalu, Victor Osime, Rufai Oseni, Babawale Oloba, Aloy Ikikwano, Yusuf Dairo, Monde Okwebolo, Victor Briggs, Emeka Nwala, Gine Kato, Ogunari Georgewell, Victor Ume, Benjamin Kalu, Muhammad Sheikh, Gentle Jack, Mohammed Isa, Mebaka Nabiebo, Michel Aluzie, Yul Edoche, Hadiza Kango, Nikki Jonas, Felix Obaudu, Patricia Obonaya, Chidi Amechi, Zainab Ibrahim, David Anyele, Ali Ibrahim, Abubakar Sadiq, Valentine Ezuchegu, Sulaiman Dabu, Uche Okoko, David Obona, OTE, United Nigeria Air. All right, this is something you mentioned uh, you are here uh, to speak for those that uh, they cannot speak. Now, I want to throw us back of October where you and your colleague move a motion that says that uh, um, a motion about uh, the title was uh, urgent need to investigate the unlawful killings and investigation of over 250 Nigerians in Ethiopia. Yeah. It was sponsored by you and your colleague. Yes. So we Nigerians would like to know how far after your motion, what has the country or Nigeria done about that? Being in the Senate. Even this afternoon, I, I had a meeting with uh, the uh, Chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, the Senior Senator Sani Bello. Um, we just finished a meeting this afternoon. Because um, uh, the Senate re re referred the matter to the Committee on Diaspora and Non-Governmental Organizations. I'm the chairman of the Senate Committee on Diaspora Affairs. And um, of course, because it had to do with uh, foreign uh, um, uh, act action or situation, um, I am to work on it with this Committee on uh, Foreign Affairs. We just met today to discuss by next week we shall be having a disposal action on that. And uh, just last week, Wednesday, there was a young man that was killed in the Philippines, a 27-year-old young man who uh, did nursing, a graduate of nursing in the Philippines, a master's degree a student, master's degree student in the Philippines, doing a part-time work. And he was killed under very unwholesome circumstances. A 27-year-old boy, the only son, of his parents, you know. I received a petition to that regard. I laid the petition at the floor of the Senate. It was referred to us again. So these are two things we shall deal with. On the Ethiopian issue, without uh, preempting what the investigation will establish, I've engaged the, the chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Honorable Bike Dabriel Lewa, and uh, she has actually uh, told me the correct story, which puts a lie to the viral video that was circulated at that time, that 250 Nigerians were on the death row, and any moment from now, they will be... That was what he, how he demonstrated it on his video. Uh, the truth about it, and uh, uh, from uh, facts made available, that was not the truth. It wasn't the case. Um, there are some Nigerians in prison there, uh, majority of them were uh, drug offenders, you know, people who involved in serving drug trafficking. Some of them we have been caught before, and through diplomatic um, um, negotiations, they were let free, you know, through an exchange program. And um, some of them went back again, committed the same offenses, and they were caught. You know, and on such drug-related uh, offenses, second offenders are never spared in any country, you know. So uh, some of them are such people in the prison. But what we intend to do is to finish next week and probably arrange to go to Ethiopia and visit that prison. We want to see for ourselves. Um, the, the young man that was killed in the Philippines, his own was the most brutal because he was beaten to stupor by some Chinese nationals, you know and dumped for dead. The police uh, took him to the hospital and there was confirmed dead. A healthy young man, very handsome boy. So uh, we 
believe as Nigerians. The Nigerian Senate believes that uh, Nigerians cannot be treated that way. Anyway, how much more in a, in a country in Africa? Or, I mean, uh, uh, in, 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 in Philippines, for example, where we have a diplomatic relationship. Uh, we have ambassador to the Philippines from Nigeria. The Philippines have an ambassador here in Nigeria. So next week we'll interface with the ambassador to the Philippines. So we want to get to the root of it. What we are demanding for is justice for the Nigerian. Uh, he's dead. He, he, uh, he will not come back to life. But those who are responsible for his murder should be seen to be prosecuted and uh, an appropriate uh, sentence handed down. It's not something that to be swept under the carpet. So that um, tomorrow, when you see somebody and you hear that he's a Nigerian, you don't kill him because people will come af uh, asking after him and those who killed him. This is what we want to achieve. So follow uh, both reports to conclusive uh, actions. Okay, still on uh, just the last one, still on justice for Nigerians. You have your Eastern brother, Pase, uh, Mazi Nandikalo. You have been in the Senate and you've seen several years they went to different courts as a religion, religion. So, what do you have to say as your brother? I quite frankly sympathize with uh, Namdekano. Uh, I've followed his struggle for a long time. I've spoken openly at various times demanding his release. Uh, even before it got to this point, by 2016, I had spoken against the way the IPOB people were treated by government. I, 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 I spoke against it when they were uh, killed in Onisha. I was on radio and uh, I condemned it. At that time, things, hadn't, things, things haven't become this rough as it turned out later. That was 2016. And March, 2000, March 3rd, 2016, I was arrested by the Department of State Security Service that I was sponsoring IPOB activities. I was whisked, whisked from Oka to Abuja by road, you know, and, and I came and uh, was interrogated by the, the direct uh, DG of SSS then, you know, uh, Lawa Daura, you know, and uh, I, I told him the truth. I said, I'm not sponsoring anybody. But I spoke against the uh, inhuman treatment uh, they were subjected to, including killing them. Uh, you know, that cannot happen. And more important, I told him the truth, which he made notes on. I said, why not look at the reason for the agitation for uh, a new state of Biafra? Why can't the government of Nigeria look and find out what they're not doing correctly that is responsible for this um, agitation. And then I asked me, what do you think um, are responsible for this? I said, simply, you're marginalizing the Southeast people. And that's why uh, any such agitation receives massive support from the people of the zone. Uh, the Southeast people f feel very discriminated against by the government over the years. Our youths are denied access to employment. Um, what is available or what are available to the youths in other parts of Nigeria are not available to the youths from Iboland or Southeast Nigeria. So if you put it in context, you see that it is very easy for you to solve the problem. Stop the, de stop the marginalization of the people and the agitation will die down. Our the, the neglect in, in our infrastructures uh, is second to none in Nigeria, you know. So when a people feel so badly discriminated against, what you are going to see is a harvest of dissent. They will, people, people will become rebellious. They will not agree to it again. So it was a situation where people feel, and justifiably too, that they are not wanted in a country you want them to be part of. And I say, we don't want to be there again.
is a very simple solution. Those things that you are denying them, give it to them, and they will be happy. You know, uh, Namdi's case uh, is very pathetic. Um, in the Eighth Senate, I, I, I asked a question. I said, where in the world have you seen the use of court prescription to address a problem? So if you see somebody who is not happy, you go to the court and get an order of court to make the person happy. How can a court order compel you to be happy when you are not happy? It's not possible. You must address why I am not happy for you to get a solution. So Russian prescribing IPOB and rushing to the court to prescribe IPOB was a vain action. Since they did that, the agitation did not die. Instead, it wasn't. The conflagration wasn't. The confrontation you know, degener degenerated. So uh, issues you can tackle through roundtable dialogue and change of attitude. You are using a hammer to uh, want to whip the person into line, to knock the person to... Uh, unless you remove those things that are uh, agitating the minds of those who are protesting. You can't get it right. So Namde, uh, unfortunately, his matter is now subject to a judicial process. And I understand that in December, the Supreme Court will make a decision on that. All the time, I've severally called for his release. So many leaders in Iboland have called for Namde's release. But the government of Buhari said the law will take its full course. It won't intervene in the judicial process. You know, the Federal High Court has ordered his release. The Court of Appeal has ordered his release. And appealed to the Supreme Court. So by 15 December or so, there will be a judgment. You know, what is clear is that Namdi has not been convicted of any crime so far. So what the government is doing is the government is using its right of appeal to delay his release. And what I, I will say is that we shall all be patient with it because um, uh, you, you can use uh, 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 a step that will create more problems to solve an existing problem. That's why we are all here. Everybody is watching. We've all uh, shown very great interest in his plight. Some of the things we have done are not things you come and say on television. But we are supporting his legal struggle for freedom. You know, um, he has lawyers that defend him. His lawyers must be paid and all that. You know, so within the constitutional line allowed, uh, some of us who do not agree with the treatment that has been given to, um, we've been... Uh, um, encouraging his legal defense, you know, so that he'll be able to get um, hard in the courts. And by God's grace, I believe that his freedom is soon in coming, you know. And when that happens, I believe that lessons would have been learned from all sides, both the government and the, um, on the, on the leaders of the struggle. What we want is that thing I have spoken to you about equal opportunities to everybody. So long as Nigeria does not give equal opportunities to everybody, it will be like the issue of cutting down the bamboo tree. Another bamboo tree will spring up. You know, this thing has happened in Nigeria across the various zones in Nigeria. The Niger Delta militants, there was a time they held Nigeria's all facilities hostage. Government had to go and discuss with them, uh, put in place amnesty program for Niger Delta. People like uh, Mujahid Asari Dokobo, who was always on the, on the creek with chains of bullets around him. You know, uh, there was negotiation and uh, 
the Niger Delta militants went down. Some of them were given contracts to uh, <laughs> to do uh, pipeline surveillance running to billions of Naira, and the restiveness in the Niger Delta went down. The Boko Haram insurgency from the Northeast uh, started. Today, are you hearing very much of it now? It's going down. So it is the, the approach government needs to use with the uh, IPO people to call them to a round table and see, remove the plaque in their eyes and see the truth that what is good for the um, goose is good for the gander. So if you treat Igbo youth the way you treat the Arewa youth and the Afenifere youth and the Ijo youth, all the youths in Nigeria, if you give them that sense of belonging, you will not harvest any rebellion. But when you single some people out for marginalization for any reason, you continue to harvest agitation from them. The worst thing you can do to somebody who is not happy is to ignore him. If you ignore somebody who is not happy, you will do everything to draw your attention. <laughs> Even if uh, you are barricaded with uh, soldiers and a person, he can throw himself on you. He said, let him die. Because he has genuine grievances that needs to be addressed. So let me believe that, um, believe and hope that this government that we have now in place um, will be able to have a different approach in dealing with restiveness in Nigeria. And that is what it should be. Because the, the December 15 is on hand, we'll continue to pray for the Supreme Court to free Namdekan on that day. Many of our elders have fought for his release without any success. Ben Mabeze, Professor Ben Mabeze, remember, he was part of the delegation that went to see Buhari on a wheelchair to plead for Buhari to release Nam the Kano to him. Buhari did not listen to him. He's, he has now died. That Ben Mabeze is dead, the former Secretary General of Harris and Devo. So these are the things. There are things you will see, you begin to um, feel that you are not wanted. And that's what government must avoid. If you make somebody to feel not wanted, don't prevent the person from saying, I don't want to be part of you again. There must be a reason for somebody to be part of you, particularly in a democracy. This is a democratic system of government in Nigeria. You cannot have the loyalty of people by force. You have to end the loyalty. And the only way you can end the loyalty is by um, doing things that will promote um, happiness and satisfaction that you are there for everybody. Distinguish your message to thousands, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians, particularly youths who voted for you for this award. Many of them look up to you. They want to be like you. They want to be celebrated. <laughs> I, want, I want to thank them, first of all. I didn't know you were conducting the voting. And uh, the news you broke to me um, is cheering enough that somebody is appreciating um, the humble contributions you are making in all facets of national life. Because they see me on televisions, they see me uh, in the Senate, during plenaries, they see my contributions, they are remembering me when you call for this award and are voting. And it happens that um, I want to be given this award. It's, it's, a, it's a huge encouragement. And I want to give them the assurance that uh, I will never relent in doing this. I will continue to stand on the side of the Nigerian people on all issues, you know. Um, my my contributions and interviews have been out there in the televisions regularly. So Nigerians see my viewpoint. It's not only the youths that have um, 
uh, always spoken to me to keep it up. Elders and every person, uh, if I pass through any public place, I'll receive so much recognition. People just say, ah, distinguished, this and that. Ah, chief Ume, oh, that man with all red cap. You know, because I wear a red cap, my future is unique. So over the years, not just recently, for what I have done now, I've done it for 23 years in the Nigerian political space. I was national chairman of Abgad for 10 years. So I led an opposition party in Nigeria. And to be in the opposition is the most difficult thing you can do in Nigeria to be in opposition. I led Abga for 10 years, producing three governors, His Excellency Mr. Pitobi, uh, Chief Richard Sokorocha, and uh, Chief Willie Obiano, all through Abga. It wasn't easy. For you to win a state with a, a, an opposition party, particularly a party that has uh, support of Southeast people in Nigeria, is a, it should be a Herculean task. But I was able to do it, and uh, doing it uh, brought out the resilience and tenacity in me in the struggle and quest for justice. So there's nothing you can talk about in Nigeria in the past 20 years that people will not tell you about uh, Victor May's uh, stand or what he has spoken for, what he has been against, or what he has supported. So it's something that has uh, galvanized this uh, followership and recognition for me, you know. So, uh, as for the message I have for those for who voted for me, first of all, it's for me to thank them and then ask, tell them that their votes for me are not misplaced. That, um, it means that um, I'm on the right path from their own um, uh, assessment. I'll double my effort, you know, yeah. And to the organizers of this event, Iberi TV, your message to us. We would like you to specifically mention Iberi TV in your response. Well, uh, Iberi, TV, Iberi TV, I, I see you online. Uh, this is the first time I'm coming in contact with your crew. And uh, I like the investigative journalism you do most times. Um, most of the reports you file are heart-rending stories, uh, things that capture the feelings of the people. Um, Journalism is about um, uh, bringing about, bringing to the public uh, uh, domain issues that will agitate the people's minds, particularly those that are not going well. Uh, if, we, if we continue to bring the debt outside for people to see, those who generate the West, the debt will... will uh, stop, you know. So, but if you don't uh, bring them out for people to see how filthy they are, those who are doing it may think that they are doing good things. So, I want to encourage Ibode TV to be very professional in, 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 their, in their work. Uh, do not allow yourself, yourselves to be used to persecute an innocent person. Do not publish anything that you cannot vouch for that is true, you know, no matter the circumstance. Um, people do proxy wars. Uh, they go and hire people to publish uh, propaganda stories against people that will take um, so much effort to correct. So, so long as you are professional and... Um, you remain professional in your approach to journalism, uh, do proper investigation of any issue and publish it, you continue to strengthen your reputation, you know, so that people will want to go online and log on to Ibori TV to know the latest. And anything the person gets from your site, website, the person goes home with it, knowing that a good job has been done before putting it out. So I encourage you, and I, I, I say you should keep it up. Uh, Iberi TV is becoming popular. Um, without meeting you people, uh, sometimes I put my eyes and see uh, the, the things you are writing about and see what I can get out of it. 
So on this year, 2023 um, awards ceremony, I wish you well. Um, uh, let it uh, succeed and let it be better than other years. And may more years ahead be better than the previous years, you know. Thank you so much. I'm here with my colleague, the executive director of ABA TV, one of the biggest online TVs, both in Nigeria and in Africa. And on the 11th of November, this Saturday at Transcorp Hilton, the world will be celebrating the 2022 Civil Rights Advocate of the Year. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians who voted for you for this award. We'll be looking forward to seeing you personally. A long time of relationship that will be anchored, anchored on the promotion of uh, the truth, justice, equity, and fairness in Nigeria. Thank you so much once again. Thank um, you. Man. Fifth Iberia TV Leadership Excellence Awards, the Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton, Abuja, Saturday, November 11, 2023, 5 p.m. Red Carpet, 6 p.m. Main Event, Chairman of Ceremonies, Professor Owunari George Will, Vice Chancellor, University of Port Harcourt, Keynote Speaker, Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu, Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Special Guests of Honor, His Excellencies, Senator George Akume, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, former Senate Chief Whip, Dr. Alex Oti, Abia State Governor, Dr. Beta Edu, Humanitarian Affairs Minister. Through a seven-day nationwide online poll monitored by the News Agency of Nigeria and endorsed by the African Union African Film Institute, the following emerged 2023 winners. Bala Mohamed, Kawu Samail, Unajio for Abiam, Abdul Rabiu, Unden Naoti, Chibuz Ochinyere, Udiagwe Brown, Adams Oshomole, Ifanyi Uba, Adeze Kalu, Victor Osime, Rufai Oseni, Baba Wale Oloba, Aloy Ikikwanu, Yusuf Dahiru, Monde Okwebolo, Victor Briggs, Emeka Nwala, Gine Kato, Ogunari Georgewell, Victor Ume, Benjamin Kalu, Muhammad Sheikh, Gentle Jack, Mohammed Isa, Mebaka Nabiebo, Michel Aluzie, Yul Edoche, Hadiza Kango, Nikki Jonas, Felix Obaudu, Patricia Obonaya, Chidi Amechi, Zainab Ibrahim, David Anyele, Ali Ibrahim, Abubakar Sadiq, Valentine Ezuchegu, Sulaiman Dabo, Uche Okoko, David Obona, OTE, United Nigeria Air.